episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is cycle one, week 19, science. For everyone else, that just means that we're going to be talking about the four ocean zones. And so last week, we talked about the four types of ocean floor. Now we're going to actually talk about the different depth zones. So if you haven't already, head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. I've created um, some workbooks for you that go along with each of these videos. You can buy them there. Um, and I really think it'll help your student expand upon what they learn in these videos. Without further ado, let's start doodling. This week, we're going to talk about the ocean zones, or we can say the different layers of water. So overall, the pelagic ocean is just the open ocean. And it's important to look and study about the open ocean because it actually comprises about 50% of the Earth's surface. And so this pelagic ocean part of the world is far away from any type of land. That's why it's considered the open ocean. And it has many different types of creatures in it. Scientists, as they've begun to study the pelagic ocean, have observed and studied that these different creatures actually exist at different layers under the surface of the water. And these are called the ocean zones. And so we're going to start from the shallowest zone and go to the deepest. So the layer that is closest to the surface or the shallowest layer is called the epipelagic layer. And it extends from the surface of the water to about 600 feet deep. This layer is illuminated completely by the sun and it is called the sunlight zone for this region. And because the sun lights this zone of water, it is the warmest layer. And the sunlight in this layer is also enough light for the process of photosynthesis to take place. Now, what's photosynthesis? We talked about this in a previous video, but it is essentially the process that plants use to convert sunlight and water to energy. And so because of this sunlight and compared to all the other layers, this layer has the most life and the most activity. Another aspect of this layer is that the wind affects it and it always keeps it mixed and allows the sun's heat to be distributed vertically. Next up, let's talk about the mesopelagic zone. So directly below the epipelagic zone is a mesopelagic zone and this extends from about 600 feet to 3,300 feet. This zone is sometimes referred to as the twilight zone or the midwater zone because the sunlight does reach this area, but it is very faint. Temperature changes are very great in this zone and rapidly decrease with increasing depth. And this forms a transition layer between the mixed layer at the surface and this deeper water. Now, because of the beginning of the lack of light, a phenomenon called bioluminescence begins to appear on organisms in this zone. And that just means that these creatures can create light using their bodies. Another aspect of animals that live in this twilight zone is that the eyes on the fish that live here are much larger to allow as much light into them as possible. And they are generally directed toward the surface. And the reason scientists think this happens is that they can then see the shadows of other animals or even food against the dim light above. Next up, let's talk about the bathypelagic zone. 
this zone is underneath the mesopelagic zone and it extends from 3,300 feet deep to 13,100 feet deep. This zone is in constant darkness and so it is considered the midnight zone. The only light at this depth and lower comes from bioluminescence of the animals that live there. Now, this zone, unlike the mesopelagic zone, has a constant temperature and it never fluctuates very far from about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure in this zone is extreme and can reach up to 5,850 pounds per square inch. Even though this is the case, some sperm whales have been known to dive down to this level in search of food. And last, let's talk about the deepest zone, and this is the abyssal pelagic zone. This zone extends from 13,100 feet to 19,700 feet. And this zone is pitch black. It is the bottom layer of the ocean. And the water temperature at this depth is pretty close to freezing. Only a few creatures can be found at these depths because the pressure is so great. Creatures that live at these depths feed on things that fall from the surface. And some of these creatures have adapted to live around these things called sulfur vents because these vents spew heat into the water. The beginning part of the name of this zone, abyss, comes from the Greek word meaning no bottom because it was rig originally thought that the ocean was bottomless. Surprisingly, three quarters of the area of the deep ocean floor lies in this zone. And that's all we have for today. Don't forget to head on over and grab your workbooks at doodlingthrougheducation.com. There's a link in the description. And um, do those four worksheets for your homework this week, learning about the different zones. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.